Hey, what's up? My name is Evan Schneider and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the exciting new lenses from Suray called the Nightwalker S35 T1.2 Cine lenses. If you want to learn more about these lenses or purchase them, you can check out the link below to Sue Ray's Indiegogo page. I was really excited to see Sue Ray reach out to me. This is our first time working together and being someone who shoots professional video on the Fuji X-H2S, these lenses felt like the perfect match. Sue Ray sent me these lenses to test out. They didn't pay me to make this video and they have no say on what I say in this video. The first time they see it is going to be the first time that you're seeing it as well. Now, before I get into some of the details, I'm just gonna show you some footage that I've shot with these lenses over the past few weeks. Suray is a great company and they've been making a lot of really amazing lenses, especially their anamorphics. And so I'm excited to see them get a little bit more into the spherical lens market. A lot of times I don't really want as much character and the workflow that an anamorphic lens gives me, especially if I'm just shooting myself or if I'm shooting client work, anamorphic can be a little bit over the top. These lenses feature a good amount of character and they're also extremely budget friendly, which makes these lenses a very interesting option if you're shooting video and looking for a good quality cine lens. I'm shooting this right now on the X-H2S using the 24 millimeter and I have it set to T2.8 in order to maintain focus on myself. And since I'm in a studio environment, I don't have any ND filters or any filters on the end of it. So what you're seeing is just the true 24 millimeter lens as it looks on the X-H2S. As I was unboxing these lenses, the first thing I noticed is just how small, compact, and lightweight they are. And they really feel like the perfect lenses for a compact X-H2S rig that I've been building out. These lenses are pretty sharp, even shooting at T1.2, they maintain their sharpness really well. And I really appreciate that. I wouldn't say they're as sharp as the Sigma Art Series lenses, which are the ones I'm used to shooting with. However, I think that's actually kind of a good thing. When I'm shooting with a cine lens over a photo lens, I expect it to be a little less sharp, and I think it adds to the cinematic feel and the overall image. So throughout my professional video career, I've been mainly shooting with the Sigma Art Series lenses. But when you're shooting video with photo lenses, you always run into some small issues that cine lenses actually solve. So first of all, with photo lenses, they don't have any gears on the outside. So if you wanna rig up a follow focus or a wireless for a first AC, you need to add gears to the lenses. Now, this presents another issue if you ever wanna change lenses, you have to add multiple gears and oftentimes the gears are in different positions on each lens. So if you wanna change lenses, you have to take the gears off and you have to reposition them on the rails of the camera. This is a big issue when you're on set and you're trying to move quickly or if you're shooting solo, you don't wanna always be messing with the gears and having to change things around. So that's the beauty of cine lenses and especially the Nightwalker cine lenses is that the focus gear and the aperture gear are both in the same position on all three lenses. All three lenses are identical in their build. So they're the same length, the same width. They have the same 67 millimeter thread size on the front. And this saves a ton of time in rigging when you're attaching a follow focus or you're attaching filters to the end of the lens. And I really appreciate that the lenses are 67 millimeters because that's actually a pretty common size for filters. So I have a set of 67 millimeter threads 
and I have a set of 82 millimeter. And oftentimes if I'm putting an 82 on a smaller lens, it just looks a little crazy and it gets a little cumbersome with all of the step up rings and everything. Now the other challenge of using photo lenses for video is actually the f-stop. So photo lenses use f-stop and then cine lenses use what's called t-stop. And quickly the difference between f-stop and t-stop is that f-stop can be variable while t-stop is constant. So for instance with the Nightwalker lenses, if you're shooting at a t2.8 or t1.2 on one lens, if I switch over to the 35 or the 55, I know that I can set both of those to t2.8 or t1.2 whatever I was using on the other lens, and I know that my exposure is going to be the exact same. Whereas on photo lenses, a 1.8 or a 2.8 on one lens could let in a different amount of light on another lens, which means that if you wanna change lenses, not only do you have to change rigging, but you also have to change the lighting and the aperture and all that stuff. And speaking of aperture, on cine lenses, on the Nightwalkers, it's a variable aperture ring, so it's smooth. So you can actually adjust the aperture on the fly even without noticing, whereas on a photo lens, you have to change it in camera, and many photo lenses have hard stops for the aperture, so you can see it you know, clicking as you change it. So that's kind of my background with lenses, is that I'm very used to the clean, sharp, very clinical look of the Sigma art lenses, but I do love shooting with lenses with more character it just has either been extremely expensive to rent, so I only rent those on client gigs, and I haven't invested in a set because a set of cine lenses typically costs over $10,000 for a set of three or four lenses. And that's kind of the amazing part of the Nightwalker series lenses, is that they've kind of changed my perception of what a cine lens can be. These lenses check a lot of my boxes that I have for photo lenses shooting video, but they also add a lot of features that I wish I had on photo lenses like gears and same size and t-stop and all that. And at the price point of $309 at launch or $349 per lens MSRP really makes these a winning set of lenses in my opinion. In terms of image quality, I feel like these lenses are pretty sharp, even wide open at 1.2. They're pretty sharp, but they're not too sharp, which I think pairs well even with the X-H2S because it already records an extremely sharp image. Shooting wide open at T1.2 is a blast. If you're shooting in broad daylight, you're definitely going to need some heavy ND with you to be able to shoot that wide open and maintain shutter speed and ISO and a good exposure. Also, being able to shoot at T1.2 on a crop sensor like the X-H2S almost gives you a full frame sensor look with the extremely shallow depth of field. I find it really fun to use and it really separates the subject from the background. And also in low light, it gives you a huge advantage not having to worry about having to bring extra lights. You can just shoot with the available light, which I think is really important for documentary or wedding filmmakers. But the bokeh is just gorgeous. It has some really nice character. It doesn't look perfectly clinical and it's extremely smooth. So it doesn't have those hard edges that some photo lenses can give you. And it's kind of a taste of what you get with the Sure anamorphic lenses, but a little bit toned down. I tested the lens flares on these lenses and I noticed that they're not super prominent. On other lenses, you get some really big circles or orbs or, you know, some nice flaring. But I noticed that these lenses actually don't flare as much as you expect them to, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. But if you're looking for lenses with a lot of flare character, the flares are pretty subdued on all three of these lenses. I think they really nailed it with the focal length range on these lenses with the 24, the 35, and the 55. It gives you a really nice range from not super wide, but you know, I'm shooting on the 24 millimeter right now. And it's a nice, you know, on a crop sensor, it's not super wide, but it's not super tight. And then you have the 35, which I think is a little bit kind of an awkward in between, but gives you some more flexibility to punch in if you need to. Plus, I'm really used to shooting at 35 because I used 18 to 35 on the X-H2S already. With the 55, if you ever want to punch in a good amount or get 
a little bit more range, you can always switch over to that lens. I find that it's a pretty good option for a B cam for an interview, for instance, where you have it off to the side and you're kind of getting a bit closer in on your subject. If I had to only choose one of these lenses to grab, I would probably go for the 24 millimeter 1.2 lens. And that's because I feel like in my testing the past few weeks, as I've been using them, I've definitely reached for the 24 millimeter the most often over the other lenses. On a crop sensor, especially shooting handheld, it's not too tight and so you're not too shaky. And I find that it's a pretty nice focal length for just all around use. Another thing that really blows my mind about these lenses is that because they're so small and lightweight, I can actually fit all three cine lenses in my daily carry backpack, which means that I can fit my entire cinema rig in a medium sized backpack and carry it around with me every day wherever I go. So I can fit the 24, the 35, the 55, as well as the X-H2S with a tilt -a cage and a base plate with rods and a V-mount battery, a V-mount battery plate, all my cables, a seven inch small HD monitor, all of my ND and mist filters, as well as my laptop and hard drives and everything I need. So this literally isn't possible with most, if not all other cine lenses on the market. The lenses have a very nice build quality um, they're metal on the outside and the rings are very sturdy. The focus ring is pretty nice to use and overall the lenses just feel very sturdy and very well built. Now one thing with the gears that you might want to take into consideration, I personally shoot handheld and I'm very used to just putting my hand under the lens and actually shifting the focus myself with my hand but sometimes over time that can be a little bit less comfortable than if you're using a photo lens, which have a nice smooth and pretty big grip. But if you're looking for a little more comfort when you're pulling focus yourself, you might end up wanting to pick up a follow focus rig. I don't think it's a bad thing though. I think follow focus rigs are really helpful for shooting video and it gives you another solid point of contact when you're shooting handheld to give you a nice smooth image. The price of these lenses is also kind of mind blowing. Right now for early bird pricing, you can get them at $309 per lens. MSRP on the lenses is going to be $349, so you save $40 per lens right now if you purchase them early on the Indiegogo. Being able to pick up a set of three cine lenses for $1,000 is just incomparable. So yeah, I think after all of my testing and using these three lenses, I would definitely say that I would recommend these lenses if you're looking for a budget cine lens. None of the cine lenses, and especially at this price point, offer a T1.2 aperture. So I really think Sure is changing the game with these lenses, and I'm excited to see what everybody does with them. So thank you, Sure, for sending out these lenses to me. I'm definitely going to keep using them in client work and my own work. If you have any other questions, definitely leave a comment down below. I try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. I shot all of the footage on the X-H2S in F-Log2 and I color graded it using my LUTs that you can check out at LUTcompany.com. I also sell a Super 8 preset and Sony S-Log3 LUTs and a lot of creative looks that you can check out for your videos. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.